In this video, we generalize the concept of the point particle and we will describe strings. So we saw that a particle sweeps out a word line in the Minkowski space. So we have a trajectory and we can sketch the motion like this. So we have tau and then we have uh, the spatial dimensions. And the particle is moving in this d-dimensional space. So this is a vector with d minus one components. And here we only have this uh, tau, which uh, describes proper time, if you want to think about something more tangible. But this is a parameter that um, simply parameterizes our problem. And the last time we saw the action, we saw the role that tau had in the action, as well as the spatial parameters, the spatial components. In this video, we see how to generalize this concept to strings. In particular, we will need a time-like component, a scalar, which we still call tau, but then we also need another space-like component, which is sigma. So we will use the letter sigma. And this sigma here is necessary because the string has more than, uh, I mean, it, it has one dimension, whereas the point as a zero dimension, if you think about it. And we will think of closed strings. And in particular, we will take sigma to be periodic. And we can do that because the string is closed. So we are considering in this video closed strings. So sigma periodic. And in particular, we will consider sigma to belong to the interval 0 to pi, like this. We will package these two coordinates into a tensor, sigma alpha with two components, so tau and sigma. So we will call it sigma alpha. And uh, we will also consider the coordinates x mu, which will depend on sigma alpha, so they will depend on tau and sigma, where mu can be either 0, 1, 2, and so on, up to d minus 1. For uh, closed strings, we require that x mu tau sigma is equal to x mu tau sigma plus 2 pi because of the periodicity of sigma. And you have to think that the string sweeps out a surface in space-time, so don't get confused between space-time and the metric of the string which is described by this uh, parameter sigma. We have to consider Lorentz or Minkowski space, so the Lorentz metric. And um, we have to be able to distinguish space-time from the world sheet. The world sheet is the generalization of the word line. So the word line was this object here. But in this case, we actually have a space like this. So instead of having this line, this trajectory, we have a surface like this. And sigma will tell you how to move around the string. So we need sigma. And then we are moving in uh, another direction, which is tau. So it is the trajectory which is um, traveled by the string. So you have to think that instead of having just a line, at every point of the line here, we can associate the dimension of the, the string. So we, get, we actually get a surface. At this point, we need an action that describes the dynamics of the string. The key property that we will ask for is that uh, nothing depends on the coordinates sigma alpha that we choose on the world sheet. In other words, the string action should be reparameterization invariant. So what kind of action could we consider? Well, for the point particle, the action was proportional to the length of the world line, if you remember. So the action S was a, an integral of something ds. In particular, that something was minus m, so it was just a scalar 
and therefore s was proportional to the integral of the s, so it was proportional to the length in a space-time. The obvious generalization is that the action for the string should be proportional to the area instead of this line here. So the area that we can call A of the world shit. So I'm talking about the surface that we have here, generated by, by the, the motion of the string. And how can we write down an action that takes this into account? Well, we need to write down a metric. The metric on the surface we will call gamma alpha beta. This is also called the pullback. It's a technical term. It's a technical term that I don't want to discuss. But basically, we have to write down the following. So we have the derivative of x mu with respect to sigma alpha, and then we have dx nu with respect to sigma beta, and then we have the metric tensor eta mu nu. This is, the, of course, the Lorentz metric in uh, d dimensions, one dimension of time and d minus one dimensions of space. And now I will say something more about this, something more intuitive, but it is a generalization of what one can see in special and general relativity, for example. And then we can write down the action S. So the action S can be written like this. So it is proportional to the area. And in particular, the coefficient of proportionality we will call minus T, capital T. We will see that this T here is related to the tension of the string. But this is a constant of proportionality at the moment. And then we have to integrate over the two dimensions of um, the surface. So we'll write down an integration over d squared sigma. So in particular, this will mean d tau d sigma, if you want. And then we need the square root of minus the determinant of gamma, of the matrix gamma here. So we need minus the determinant because the determinant will be um, negative. This action can be written a little bit more explicitly, and in particular, gamma alpha beta can also be written in the following form. So if we consider that, so if we define x dot mu as the derivative of x mu with respect to tau, and x mu prime, we define it to be dx mu d sigma, we can write gamma alpha beta as a two by two matrix. Here we have x dot squared, and then here we have x dot dot product with x prime, and we define x dot squared simply as we have x dot mu, era mu nu, x dot nu, like this. Whereas this dot product here is defined as x dot mu, era mu nu, and then we have x nu prime, like this. And here we define, so here we have x dot, dot product with x prime. So you can see that this matrix is symmetric. And then here we have x prime squared, and x prime squared is simply x mu prime, x nu prime, era mu nu, like this. And then, of course, you can rewrite the action in this form. So we have minus t integral d squared sigma. And then here you have the square root of minus x dot squared, x prime squared, plus x dot dot product with x prime, all squared. Now, let's try to give some more uh, intuitive interpretation of this uh, term. I have simply rewritten the square root of minus determinant of gamma. But if we are not familiar with this uh, kind of notation, let's try to give something, so, some different perspective, a more geometrical perspective. And instead of considering a Minkowski space, it's simpler to 
give to provide some more intuition if we restrict ourselves to a Euclidean space for the sake of convenience. And let's try to sketch a portion of the surface. So in particular, our surface is parameterized by the two parameters tau and sigma. So here, let's consider our surface and let's take just a very small portion of the surface where one direction can be parameterized with um, sigma. The other, the other dimension, the other direction can be parameterized with tau. And in particular, if you want to consider the area, the small area here, the small area can be given by the length of this vector and the length of this vector, and then we have to take the sine of the angle between the two vectors, right? Because if we take a parallelogram like this, and so we take these two vectors, for example, this one and this one, if we take the, the mode of the cross product between these two vectors, I get exactly the area of this parallelogram. If you want, if I have this angle, which I can call beta, and uh, I will call this vector dl1, and this, vet, this vector I can call dl2. So the area is given by dl1 cross dl2, which is also equal to dl1, dl2 mode. And then I have the sine of beta, like this, right? But I can also rewrite this as square root of dl1 squared, dl2 squared, and then I have the sine squared, which can also be written as 1 minus the cosine squared of beta. And now I can rewrite this as the square root of dl1 squared, dl2 squared, and then I have minus, and then I have dl1 squared, dl2 squared, cosine squared beta. But I can write that as dl1 dot product dl2, and then I take the square of this, right? Because that's exactly the definition of the dot product. And if you check now, this expression has a very similar form to this expression here. And this provides motivation into why the surface can be written like this. So if you also know something about multivariable calculus, it should be quite intuitive, quite intuitive that we can write the area like this. And then here we started from the fact that from the generalization of the action written like that. So the action is not proportional to the length, but in this case, we should actually take the action to be proportional to the surface described by the, the string. By the way, this is also called the Nambu Goto action. So let me write it down. The action that we wrote is the Nambu Goto action. I'm talking about this action here for uh, the relativistic string.